Yo, this is Edgar. You're now watching the Let's Meet show on Secular. Hi, so what's up, Bob? Welcome to the Let's Meet show presented to you by Secular. Um, thanks for being here. Thank you for having uh, me. Yeah. The purpose of this show is to highlight individuals in the city who are doing just like creative things, really just passionate about what they're doing and spreading love through it. And when I think of things like that, I think of you from when I first met you, you've always showed love and support to my craft and the creative stuff that I do. So I want to thank you. Uh, introduce yourself and give a little background. No, yeah. I mean, first and foremost, thank you for having me, bro. Um, my name is Edgar Flores. I'm a barber here in Colorado, uh, business owner as well. Um, proud co-founder of Mi Gente Barbershop. Uh, we've been at it for a while now, bro. We've been in business for a while now. It's been a little bit over like nine, 10 years now. Um, it was initially started by my cousin. Um, that's the man who brought me in the game. So shout out to him, Misael. Um, yeah, bro, he was the one that introduced me to everything, put me on the game, showed me the ins and outs of, you know, the business side. And um, we've been at it ever since, man. We've been at it ever since. We got a couple other projects that we've been working on this year outside of barbering. Um, and that's that's been good. So I'm excited to see what this new year brings, man. I'm excited to be here as well. Thanks for having me once again, bro. That's dope, though. I think you really, in uh, I'm inspired by you because uh, tell people how old you are. I'm 22 right now. Turning right. 23 this year, though. 22 turning 23, yes, business owner, bar half owner of a barbershop <laughs> take notes y'all i'll be telling people about you i'll be at work bro i'll be telling, I was telling people you're going to be on this episode I and i was like yo this know. dude didn't go to college because i'm a big advocate for people who i support people who go to college but i also am impressed by people who don't go to college for and sure. make things work i think for me it just shows your work ethic um your grind your passion your ambition and i wish i had half that shit when i was your age because i was actually nah, really lazy um but that's a whole different story. Nah, yeah. I mean, I started really young though, bro. So, you know, that helped a lot. Um, I know I'm really young, but I really started like at like 14. So it's, it's been a lot of years in the making. Um, you know, I'm, I'm young, but I, I, I kind of got a head start, I guess you could say. Um, but I mean, everybody's on their own journey, bro. You know, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, so to speak, young, but I feel like everybody got their own timing. You know, there's no like right timing. You know, it's God's timing and it's always right, always on time. It just takes people a little longer, but you know, it's all a journey, bro. You gotta take it for what it's, what it's worth and just keep going. And to give people some background, you said you started many, many years ago. What did that look like many, many years ago? You getting started, you getting into it. Uh, give us a, like a picture of what that looked like at that time. At that time, bro, I was selling candles. That was my, my first, um, actual job i never had like a, and when i say actual job i mean like like where you have to submit an application and like a resume i've never had to do none of that like i've never had a so to speak regular you know job um when i was in middle school i i, I first started making money by i was selling candles at the time in like parking lots uh working for this old guy his name was steve and he just pick us up from middle school bro and just go drop us off in random parking lots we'd get like a $2 commission off of every candle that we sold. So it wasn't crazy money, but it was some money, especially in middle school, you know, like I wasn't working. So I always had money to eat. That was always cool. Um, so I started off with that. I was at it for a little bit doing that, going into high school. When I went to high school, it was um, Hinkley. I was right down the street from the one of the, the primary shop that I'm at now. Um, and I would go get my haircuts with my cousin. And he told me, he proposed to me if I wanted to learn how to cut hair. And at the time, you know, I was just selling candles. I was, any way to make money was, was a good idea for me. So I was like, yeah, like, let's do it. You know, I'm down. He said, like, all right, I'm going to need you here every single day after school. You're going to shadow me. I'm like, yep, I'm all in. Let's do it. Like, I don't care, you know. I was just looking to learn, looking for ways to make money, really. Um, so I was excited. Uh, and the first couple of years, they were hard, bro. Like, I'm not gonna lie, learning how to cut hair is not easy. And it's definitely not for like the week because, you know, there's a lot of 
trials and tribulations that you go through that make you question whether it's even for you in the beginning. At least for me, it was, um, you know, you mess up a lot of haircuts. You get cussed out a couple of times, you know, it's bad. But I think the important part is to just see it through. Um, see it through and know that it's all the process. You know, take everything for what it's worth. Learn from all the downsides that you go through. Um, and that's really it, bro. Just really just keeping like pushing one foot in front of the other. Those fir the first couple years are really hard, but after you get through those years, it's smooth, bro. It's smooth. And I'd be here all day if I could tell you like all the pros about barbering and all the things that I love. I was actually just talking to one of my homies the other day and we were talking about the exact same thing and I was telling him how like last Friday, bro, I was like bucked up back to back, like haircut after haircut. I didn't even get to sit down. It was like a long day of work, you know? But I was, as I was cleaning up my, my tools at the end of the day, it didn't even feel like a long day at work. Like it felt like I was kicking it with the boys all day, you know? Cause it's just laughters and you know, cause you've been at the barbershop. It's just like a bunch of homies and men just vibing, bro. You know, in a safe spot. It's almost like a little spa place for like men to just go relax and you know be with your bros bro just talk about you know a bunch of different things that you can't talk about in any other spot bro so it's it's definitely uh something that i love and hold close to heart bro because it's really changed my life thank you thank you for sharing that uh what that takes me to next is uh, you gave us the background um how you started how you got into it pros and cons now, for those who are looking to transition to be part owner or owner with things, what did that look like for you? How did that come about? Because to be an owner in something, you got to like, from my perspective, you got to put up money or you got to, you know, you got to put in a lot of work. So from you just shadowing then becoming a barber, what was the transition into becoming like an owner? Um, yeah, for sure. Now, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of hard work, bro, like I mentioned. It was a lot of previous years of just putting my head down and working, you know? Um, like I mentioned, it wasn't easy. You know, you go through a lot of testaments where you're like, is this even for me? Is this what I'm gonna do in the long run? But I feel like the main part is just staying focused. Um, that's what I did. Just put my head down, worked for as long as I could. You know, throughout the years, you start to see barbers come in, barbers go out. Barbers that started way before I had started, you know, started leaving. And I was one of the ones that stayed there for the longest. So over time, um, my partner kind of just proposed to me, my partner now, but boss at the time, uh, proposed to me that he wanted to go in business with me. And, you know, I was all for it. I was all for it. Um, I didn't know the first thing about business. So he taught me everything I know today. Um, and I'm still learning a lot of new things, you know, I don't even know it all. You know, I'm learning every day. Um, but yeah, bro, essentially, he just asked me if I wanted to go into business with him. Um, fortunately, I had some money saved up on the side and we rocked out like that for a while until we got this this second location going. And seen it, he sent it to me one night and I had messaged the owner that was trying to sell that shop. Um, Reached out to him, told him if we could go look at the shop. And it was already a barber shop, the second location that we got. So we just had, we went the next day, went to go look at it and we loved it. And we got to close the deal fortunately with him. And it's really just like, like I mentioned, bro. It, it, I was almost so like, it, it felt fake in the beginning because it was like almost too good to be true. But it was, it was nice, bro. It was nice, you know, to, look back and reflect on everything that you went through and to finally like tell yourself like it was all worth it you know and this is just like the beginning um we're barely getting started bro so i'm like i said i'm excited for what this year is going to bring not just in barbering but in other projects we got going on um but honestly y'all i give all thanks to god bro and to my cousin really because he he's the one that you know took me under his wing and taught me everything that i know today um, that's my guy, bro. That's my guy for sure. Yeah, dope. Thanks for sharing that. I think the key thing to take away from that, what sticks with me is hard work, putting your head down and working hard and not really expecting anything out of anyone. Thanks. Just being a hard worker and that alone 
It's like you're putting that out to the universe and then the universe rewards you in That's a way, a fact, you know? Yeah, bro. So thank you. Thanks for sharing that. You answered your creative expression. Barbering is your creative expression. You so that's obviously you view it as an art. Uh, I view barbering as an art because everyone has the different shaped head, different hairstyles. You know, people want this design or whatever. Yeah. And how do you? Obviously, it's going to be hard work. But um, how do you adapt to that? You know what I mean? Like. Someone wants to, matter of fact, I had a perfect example. I wanted a certain hairstyle one time and you was like, nah, I don't think this works for you. You should do this. Yeah. So like, how do you go about that as an artist? Cause it truly is your art. Like I'm not, that's not my art. I don't really know. And I feel like you gave me that direction and that psh, everyone loved it when I came to work with that haircut. They're like, yo, Thanks. I look fire. Nah, and it's yeah. like, that was, that was your art artist direction from you in a way Thanks. and it's like how do you own that how do you how are you comfortable with sharing that with guests or like people you they might you don't know how they're going to receive it you know what i mean how, yeah, nah, how do you thanks. go about that nah honestly i i used to be like the opposite of that like when i was barely coming up in the barber game i was kind of new to it all you know and i was just like when people would sit in your chair and they'd be kind of be like well i don't know what i want like you know and I'd kind of be there like, what, what do you mean you don't know what you want? Like, you're supposed, well, do I know what you want? I don't know what you want. <laughs> then who knows, you know? But then I, you know, I, I went to school for it and they kind of educated me on like different head shapes and what haircuts go with what, you know, ha hair textures. Some people have curly or straight hair and what haircut best, best suits them, you know, taking all those things into consideration. And that's when I actually learned that the barber's the one that's supposed to be knowing what, what the client wants, you know? Obviously, they can come to you with an idea, but you can propose other ideas that you may think are better. And I think that's your job as a professional. If you, you know, identify as a professional in the game, um, is to know and to be able to advise your clients and advocate for them. Like, you know what, bro? I think this route would maybe look a little better. And it never hurts to try. You know, you just try a haircut. And if you don't like it, the next time you come in, hey, you know what? It didn't work out for me. Let's do this haircut. And you, you just kind of, Along, like along the way, you just kind of learn, you know, different types of haircuts and what goes with who and their style even, you know, you got to consider all those different types of things. Like you, you know, you, I consider you a pretty stand-up guy, you know, pretty professional looking dude. Um, and the haircut you were trying to go for at that time, I didn't think was going to represent that, bro. So I thought, I was like, you know what, bro, I think it's better to do this, you know? And, you know, like you said, it worked out for you, so I'm glad. Pretty much, you told us your favorite song is Best Day Ever by Mac Miller. And I want to know why is that your favorite song or what do you love about that song? Um, that song, I've listened to it since a kid, bro. And I, I really love everything about the song, really. But my favorite part, I guess, would be the part where it says, no matter where life takes me, you always find me with a smile. So to be happy, always laughing like a child. And I think that's really big for me because no matter, you know, what I've went, what I've been through in life, I've always tried to just maintain that positive attitude, you know, always trying to find a reason to smile. And I think that's key for, you know, just for staying sane, essentially, bro, because life isn't easy. You know, you're going to go through a lot of things that are going to test you as a person, you know, the bunch of ups and downs, emotion wise and mentally, mental wise. And I think the most important part is just finding a way to be happy, you know? And if you can't be happy, don't be sad. You know, there's there's always a reason to smile in life, no matter where you are. And the most important part is, bro, is just keep going, bro. Maintain that positive attitude and know that nothing, rainy, rainy days don't last forever. You know, the sun's gonna shine one day. So that's why I really love that song and that part about that song. I was listening to that song. I, I'm, I struggle to listen to songs without drums. So like I'm listening <laughs> to that song and I'm just like, yo, where are the drums? <laughs> yeah, you pick, you pick up on every instrument. Yeah, huh? so to me, I, I thought it was a dope song still. I can't, I'm, uh, funny thing about Mac Miller, Mac Miller, Nipsey Hussle, they be mad artists that I don't appreciate till after they're gone. Yeah, so artists, please forgive me, y'all. Rest in peace, Mac Miller, Nipsey. Facts. There's a couple other artists that I truly love and the grind they had that I couldn't see it at that time in my life for whatever reason. But now when I look back and hear their music, I'm like, damn, y'all was missing out yeah, when thanks, they was bro. here and they was blessing us with this stuff. So my bad, Nipsey and Mac, but I, I still love y'all, support y'all, rest in peace, y'all. The impact you guys left on music thanks. is will never, 
be the same because of y'all. So thank y'all. Big thing important to me is culture. Uh, I'm Puerto Rican background, grew up around a lot of the melanated culture. So I, I just love culture and what it brings. So I like to ask people their cultural background. What is your cultural background? I'm Mexican American. Um, yeah, big on, on, on the Mexican part first, bro. You know, I identify as a Mexican first. Um, those are my roots, you know, that's where my family originated from. You know, it was Mexico. Um, I love my bloodline. It's, it's beautiful, bro. It's, you know, you you meet some of the most hardworking people. Um, they're really caring, bro. Like, if you, if you, I mean, you know, because you, you treated with a lot of Mexicans. So you know how they get down. You know, they just work hard. I feel like they don't really try to mess with nobody. They're just here to, to do better, bro. To do better, to look after their family. And, and that's why I really appreciate, like, coming from that bloodline. What are things you take away from your culture and incorporate in your life today or even your brand or your creative expression? Do you find ways to draw things from your culture to help it influence the image that you're giving out to the public? Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, the our barbershop name is Mi Gente. You know, that's that's a, a Spanish for my people. You know, um, it's really just like a a reflection of like hard work that was you know initiated by hardworking people. Uh, I try to incorporate that in the barbershop is to just always work hard, always give it your all. You know, stay dedicated give every ounce even when you don't think you have anything left you know you could always push harder what is a brand you admire and the brand you wrote that you admire happens to be secular no for <laughs> sure bro what about secular you admire i admire everything about it bro you know it's a reflection of hard work and dedication you know like you mentioned we were talking earlier um and you told me that you know this is decades of hard work bro this ain't nothing that's been overnight you know, so I admire that about about you and the brand that you're carrying this out so far because a lot of people, bro, would be so successful if they were to just be as dedicated as you. You know, a lot of people don't see th things through. You know, they get discouraged because it's taken X amount of years. And I admire that about you, that you're holding on to this and you're seeing it through, bro, because it's not easy. It's really not easy. Um, so I admire that, you know, it's, it's hard work, it's dedication behind what you're doing right now. Thank you, I, I appreciate that. For those who don't know, before Secular, it was Mike Extra Productions, and then obviously it evolved. Uh, I feel like God told me I had to remove my name out of what I was trying to do. Because um, a lot of times a name, it's more personal. Um, some people might not be able to connect with you on a personal level. Right, and I yeah. feel like having a brand name to represent um, what I'm trying to do or whatever, the, what the work God's trying to do to me actually, yeah, secular was it. But that's a whole other conversation. What does success look like to you or what is success for you? Um, like you mentioned, success, you know, it's, an, it's a number of things for a lot of different people. You know, everybody has their own perspective on it. Mine's personally, um, something I've always been big on is to just be able to take care of my family, you know? Give back to my parents, you know, because they, they worked really hard to be able to provide for us. You know, coming from a big family, it's not easy to be able to provide like for a big family, but my parents always made ends meet, even if it meant, you know, shorting themselves out. Um, like I met a family of nine, we're a big family. It's my parents and I got four brothers and three sisters. So it's a lot of us. Um, and I know that it's not easy. And as I grow up, I start to realize more and more of the things that we went through. So I think that's that's huge for me, is to just be able to take care of my family, bro. I look back and, you know, we don't come from much. It, we, you know, it was, it was nine people in a two bedroom apartment at one point. And we, we, thug, we lived that out for, a, for a quite a, a good amount of time. Um, and I just bought a house recently with my sister. And to just be able to put my parents in the house, you know, something that we own, we've never really owned anything. To just be able to do those little things, bro, and then reflect on how far we've came as a family, 
to just be able to give back, it feels really good, bro. It makes me feel, um, you know, at peace knowing that I'm on the right track. You know, like I said, we're barely getting started and um, pray to God that uh, it only gets better from here on out. Um, you know, it's not the biggest house in the world that we got them, but coming from where we come from, to me, it feels like the biggest house in the world, you know? Nah, I appreciate that. I respect that. Another reason why I wanted to have Edgar on the show, y'all, was 22 going on 23. Just look at everything he's doing and saying, y'all. Um, business owner, side business owner, just help cop a crib for his parents. Like, bro, that's beautiful, son. Like, you I definitely, that, I, I hate the word inspire, but you motivate me yeah, to, to grind and, like, to go after it. You know what I mean? So just yeah, as much sure. as secular is an inspiration to you, the brand Edgar Flores is an inspiration to Miguel Franqui. So I, I, I want to thank you for that, that bro. bro. Like, thank you. the things you're doing is beautiful. You know what I mean? A lot of people get self-centered, but your whole message is love, God, and family. And I, I, I definitely respect that. No, for sure, man. Thank you. The impact you want to leave on the world. Tell us about the impact you want to leave on the world. Just work hard. Work hard, bro. You know, nothing bad comes from working hard. You'll only see positive things come out of doing that. You know, staying dedicated and, and grinding day in and day out, even when you don't feel like it. If you can just put your head down and just keep going, you know, eventually the sun the sun will shine, bro. That's what I'd wanna I'd wanna leave the world with is just give it everything you got, you know. Don't leave no drop in the tank. This is gonna be a little bonus question, y'all. For y'all watching out there, y'all the barbers. I know y'all the barbers be following my man's Booksy. Let's touch on Booksy. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all don't know how I met Edgar, um, his man's that used to cut my hair, George. Got shout out to George. George is a good dude. Like um, one time George couldn't cut my hair. So then he slid me over to Edgar and lost me forever as a client. <laughs> Still love you, George, but... And how, how it worked was because Edgar cut my hair one time and then I, I think I texted him or something and I wanted you to cut my hair again and then it didn't work out or whatever and then you slid me the app. And then a lot of barbers use apps. I'm from New York, that's all they do now. But I, I just wanna touch on this because of the importance of time, time management, um, like a lot of people take things personal, you know what I mean? Nothing's ever personal, but like people got moves to make, money's time, time is money, same Thanks. thing. Yeah. And I just, I want you to talk about a little bit how, how just utilizing that tool, that resource, how does that help you as a barber and how does that help you grow as an individual? That helps me a lot, bro. You know, I don't gotta be back on my phone in between clients, you know, replying to people, hey, come at this time, hey, can you do this time? or you know making appointments the day before and just on my phone all day it helps me a lot because it saves me a lot of time and not only me but i feel like for the client as well i mean you touched on it everybody has their personal things and moves they're making so time is key bro time is literally money so you don't you i mean for you to even be waiting on a message on, on a reply from me you know you're losing out on time when you could just be you know, and like, like you mentioned, punching into the link and just looking at the times I have available, seeing what works for you and just booking your appointment. I think it's really convenient for both both sides, you know, clients and barbers. Um, and, you know, like you said, shout out my guy, George. I've tried to get him to, to hop on, bro, but he doesn't want to. You know, it's been, it's been, it's been years now and he's just not, not cracking. But it, it really does help a lot, bro. And shout out, like you said, my guy, George. Everybody at the shop is just as good, if not better than me. Facts. So shout out all my guys at the barbershop. Yeah, shout out to George. George cut my hair fire. There's nothing personal towards George. I love the way my man's cut my hair. Just I, time management is key to me. It's something I'm working on. Um, my time is valuable just as much as the barber's time is. So I, I need to be able to schedule something because I got to go. I got two jobs. I might have to edit a video. You know, I might have to go do a little secret date sushi with a shorty <laughs> kitchen, I wasn't bro. planning on. <laughs> nice you know what I mean? Though, yeah. So you never know. Just um, just a little key out there, y'all. I know be mindful of your barbers. Thanks. You know what I mean? Be mindful of your time, not only, and be mindful of their time. And I feel like that that's how we can all grow as individuals is just more awareness. And I want to touch on that because I think that's a fire thing you do. And 
as common of a thing it is nowadays with tech, a lot of people don't utilize it. Like there's yeah. resources that some of the kids be like, bro, why aren't you using this? Or Fact. like when I make a to-do list, I write it down on paper and they're like, bro, why don't you put it in your phone? I'm like, well, cause I want to cross it off and blah, 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 okay. whatever. It's like, you know, we all have our different things that work for us, but there is tools and resources out there and God has given us this technology. And sometimes we have to use it yeah, to our advantage. Make life easier for sure. Nah, that's a big fact, bro question of what type of fruit would you like to consume when you are in the studio and you chose a mango yeah tell them tell them about the mango i think it was busting bro i think it was good i sliced the fresh mango for him i I skinned it i sliced it my guy for sure yeah Uh, nah it was it was delicious got me a nice glass of water you know healthy healthy teens only that's a fact my bad i didn't mean to cut you off but um yeah, trying to promote healthy lifestyle here at Secular. So I just want y'all to be aware of that. So there's no cookies for y'all. Zero cookies. Gluttoning no cookies. ass people. <laughs> we, we eating straight clean. First question I asked you, what made you start Secular? That's a deep question. This is good. The, I, the reason why I like the Let's Meet show y'all is because you get to meet a guest. And in every episode, you get to meet me a little bit. So he has two questions, but I'm only going to give y'all one. What made me start Secular? Uh... Like I said earlier, I used to, um, I've been creating, I mean, I'm 33, going to be 34 this year. I don't know. You could ask my mom. I've been creating, when I was a kid, I would bang pots and pans and record it on a little tape deck. So I've always been creating, but I've always just, um, I never had a name. Then when I got into like my early twenties, all my, my family and my friends in New York, mainly like my brothers, they gave me the name Mike Extra. Um, that's a whole other story. Then Mike Extra, I rocked for Mike Extra for mad years. And then about two years ago, I knew I had to separate my name from what I'm doing because I'm more than just that. Like I do videos, I could do graphic design, I could yeah, do, beats, things, yeah. do mad different creative things. So I needed a brand to represent that. And I also wanted a brand, like I, I grew up in the streets. Um, some people may beg to differ, but like my family and friends, they know. And I'm a very street oriented person. Uh, the streets can be viewed as the world. Um, so I've, pr- I've been praying on a brand name. Uh, I was like, God, I need a brand name. I need a brand name. And the name secular came to mind. If anyone knows what the name word secular in a religious form is, secular means of the world. So growing up in church, I'd always try to connect with people, community, and the the people I would associate myself with outside of church or the music or the things I would do, they would always be like, oh, those are your secular friends. You listen to secular music, meaning I listen to worldly things or whatever. And for me, that created a division. It's like, why are they secular? Like, why aren't they just regular human beings who are going through life? Um, So I just thought it was perfect. God God is like, I feel like God's using me to bring unity between the world and um, spirituality because a lot of things, religion divides a lot of people in my opinion. So the, the name secular is just of the world. And I feel like it's my way to connect people who would be viewed as of the world. Um, to just anything like we don't have to separate us we're all human beings we all go through things we all have different experiences and to judge someone or separate them because of that or they're not viewed in a certain light in church i feel like that that's hurtful um so that's i i went off on a rant but that's how i started secular y'all is to pretty much shine a light on things of the world that are going on and it doesn't mean that they're any different we're all just human beings and we all need to just be loved on thanks that's beautiful bro nice Thanks for asking. Yeah, no as, doubt, um, bro. So well, as we wrap this up, how can people find you? How can they contact you? How can they get to Mi Gente Barbershop? How can they get their driveway plowed? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny how you mentioned that driveway plowed. I actually, I worked overnight last night. For those of you that don't know, uh, one of our other projects that we have going on right now is we started a snow removal company. So we have some contracts lined up every time that it snows. We got to be out there cleaning. You know, so I was just working last night. But... Mihenta Barbershop, uh, that's the name of the, of, the, of the shop. The first one's located on 1350 Chambers Road, right across from the Big Vasa Fitness. And the second location is the 15420 Smoky Hill Road, um, 80015, right down the street from Smoky Hill High School. Um, you could call, you know, you can book your appointment online through our shop. Whatever is more convenient for you, we'll take care of you. Yeah, that's where I get my hair cut at, y'all. 
So, I mean, if you don't like my cut, don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I always got a fresh cut. Every time I leave with a cut, I'm always getting told how fresh my cut look. If I'm FaceTiming my little niece, she's like, Dia, I like your haircut. There you go. So, Good the, the, my niece Back. gave the barbershop the cosign, y'all. I ain't what you want. <laughs> Facts, certified. Yeah. So, niece um, certified. Niece so. certified, you know what <laughs> I mean? I know a lot of y'all got little nieces and cousins out there. They certified it. But, bro, I want to thank you for coming on here. Uh, much love to you appreciate you as always thanks for having me bro anytime anytime you want to come back up here you're working on a new project you want to shed light on anything you're more than welcome up here this is a platform to just spread love so i appreciate you having me bro i'm excited to see um where this is gonna go because i think it's dope bro i think it's dope what you're doing and I, i really hope you you continue to see this through bro because this is nice bro this is a lot of fun and once again thanks for having me my boy